Yo, 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 it's Joe from Photos with Phones. This morning, we're out here obnoxiously early to do some astrophotography with our smartphone. Let's get to it. So, I got myself up at like 3 a.m. this morning, drove about an hour outside of Denver so that we could get rid of some of those city lights. Now, let's go do some astrophotography with our smartphone. To do our smartphone astrophotography today, we're going to use just the regular native camera app on both the iPhone 11 Pro and my Google Pixel 3a, test out Apple and Google's night modes. And then we're also going to use the Moment Pro camera app to do some long exposures to capture some light trails. Let's do it. What is astrophotography? Astrophotography is really just taking pictures of the sky. Now, the best astrophotography is going to be long exposure photography so that you can let all of that extra light into your camera sensor and it shows the motion blur of the stars as the Earth is rotating. If you are unsure as to what long exposure photography is, you're going to want to check out the guide right up there. It is worth noting that because to do good astrophotography, you need to have minimal light interference that I'm not going to be able to do a great job of capturing my actual astrophotography shoot. There'll be some b-roll that I capture from my pixel of my iPhone and from my iPhone of my pixel but I'm not going to be able to light the scene effectively because it'll screw up the actual astrophotos and we're here for the astrophotos. Before we get out of the car to do our astrophotography, I'm going to go ahead and point out that what I'm doing is not super true astrophotography because I'm not attaching a telescope to my smartphone's camera to capture the deep sky kind of photos. We're going to be capturing photos of stars and the moon, um, but it is worth pointing out that I'm doing astrophotography, but I'm not doing true, true, true astrophotography. If you know what I'm talking about, you know. I mentioned I drove about an hour outside of Denver this morning so that I could find a place with not as much man-made light. The ideal situation for doing astrophotography is out in like the middle of a national park where there's no man-made light for miles. Unfortunately, Rocky Mountain National Park is like almost two hours away from where I live in Denver, so. We're doing the next best thing. As far as gear that you'll need to do astrophotography on your smartphone, as I mentioned earlier, to take those deep sky photos, you're going to need a telescope. But if you're just trying to do the kind of stuff that I'm doing here today, all you really need is a smartphone. In addition to the smartphone, you probably want a phone tripod. But if you don't have a phone tripod, you can literally just kind of like set your phone up against something and gets the job done. In addition to that tripod, you're going to want something to start your slow shutter long exposure photo without you tapping on the screen. The best option for something that does this is going to be a Bluetooth camera remote. If you don't know what a Bluetooth camera remote is, check out that guide up there. But in short, all it does is allows you to activate the shutter without touching your phone. If you don't have a Bluetooth shutter remote, if you are an Android user, you can pretty easily go into the settings of your headphones or camera and set up the volume control on your headphones to take photos. If you have the Apple original headphones, you can also do the same thing with those. Additionally, you're gonna want some sort of app that allows you to do long exposure or slow shutter photography. My favorite option at the moment is the Moment Pro Camera app. If you want a little bit more information or you want a full review of the Moment Pro Camera app, drop it down there in the comments and I'll make it happen. 
Before we give you the consensus on astrophotography on the Memo Pro camera app, consider subscribing to Photos of Friends' YouTube channel. We come out with twice weekly mobile photography and filmmaking content. Alright, it's really, really, really cold outside, but I got it done. Let's talk about how to do astrophotography on your smartphone. The first thing worth mentioning about my astrophotography this morning is I had some serious issues with the Moment Pro camera app. This is the first time I've had any sort of exporting issues from the Moment Pro camera app to the camera roll. Normally with photos, they just automatically upload. Um, but I was trying to get those star trails and so I was leaving my phone doing its long exposure thing for like 10-15 minutes at a time and it was saying that it was taking photos but then it would finish and it wouldn't export anything. So that was a little frustrating. Um, if I can find a reason for why this is happening, when I get home I will go out again tonight and capture some long exposures on the Moment Pro camera app, but I did capture some astrophotography on both the iPhone 11 Pro's native camera and the Google Pixel 3a's native camera, so we'll go over the results of that right now. So the Google Pixel 3's camera is going to come with a night sight feature that is going to include a little astrophotography gig. I found that it worked so much better than I expected it to. I actually much prefer the photos that I got from the native camera on the Google Pixel 3 to those that I got on the iPhone 11 Pro. I'll go ahead and show you the comparison right now. Why don't you go ahead and let me know down there in the comments which one you prefer and also let me know if you want me to try a third party astrophotography app instead of Moment Pro Camera. So after a little bit of research I came to the conclusion that the Moment Pro Camera app is not going to do the star trails that I wanted it to. So after a little bit more research I settled on the Nightcap app because it definitely does. Let's go ahead and check out the results right now. Seems like this nightcap app is going to be convoluted, right? That's where you're wrong. Literally the easiest photography app I've ever used. All you do is hit that star button, then hit the star trails, then tap the brightest point in your photo, and then let it go. It's best if you want to have the full circle of the star trail to leave it for multiple hours. In the photo that you saw, I left it for a little bit over an hour. Um, and I think had I been able to leave it for longer, you would have seen even more star trails. Unfortunately, I got out here at about 4.40 in the morning and by about 5.40 in the morning, this place was bumping with runners and dog walkers and that kind of stuff. Um, and I just didn't want to lose the quality that I had trying to get greedy. So if you are interested in a more in-depth review of the Nightcap app, I can certainly do one. I would love to, on a night warmer than the last couple nights, come out and do some further testing. But yeah. Alrighty, you've got some awesome astro photos. Now it's time to take them to the next level. Fortunately for you, the most recent video posted on this channel was the three best free photo editing apps for iPhone and Android. So let's choose one of them and get to editing. That's all we got for you. If you feel like you got value from this video, go ahead and hit the like button down there. It definitely helps photos and phones out a lot because it forces YouTube to show our videos to other people. Go ahead and comment down below if you know of any other astrophotography apps worth trying out. 
because of how poorly the Moment Pro camera app performed this morning, I'd love to give a different app a try. So let me know what you're using. As always, subscribe to Photos with Fun's YouTube channel. We're coming out with twice weekly mobile photography and filmmaking tips, tricks, hacks, reviews, unboxings, everything that you can think of. Subscribe. Do it now. Toodles. See you in the next one. Bye.